Chapter 32 Nicholas Whitworth, Earl of Rochelle With Rosalind on his arm, the ball didn't seem quite so dreary. Earlier in the morning, Ada had her wish of a small wedding. The Queen had acknowledged after Gerard's castle incident that an intimate wedding was the safer option. The following balls were still on the table, despite moving to Buckingham Palace. The amount of guards, both royal and Welsh, had tripled. William Devereux was in the wind. He had sent updates on Lady Rochelle with his new seal, a bow and arrow instead of a needle and thread. Rosalind had intervened and asked that Lady Rochelle receive medical treatment at an asylum instead of punishment. Guilt crept in that Nicholas hadn't done more to protect his mother. Gerard had made it clear Lady Rochelle would pay restitution to the Crown for her sins. At least with William, Rosalind could ensure medical aid. In the end, all three of them, Gerard, Rosalind and Nicholas, were wrong. There weren't two tailors, but three. Or rather, one tailor and two impostors. William was just one tailor in a long line of vigilantes trying to right the wrongs of a broken system. Are you certain you don't want to dance? Nicholas whispered in her ear. He already knew the answer, but loved to watch her skin prickle. Rosalind rolled her eyes and whispered back, Do you have any idea how much coin is in this room? He chuckled. The woman was a delight beyond measure. He guided her to the balcony. He had news to share that might earn her ire. Well, she curtsied, out with it. I've not said a word. I know your tells, Nicholas. The faintest hint of her childhood accent was there. He'd not seen the return of the full-blown Scottish lilt since she'd yelled at her brother William. Lady Conroy escaped. She's not been found. Neither has my brother. Your brother is not the one who evicted the orphans. Rosalind removed her gloves. She rubbed her fingers together and inspected the calluses on her fingers. She'd kept up her archery practice, much to Girard's chagrin. In lieu of a sentence, the Queen agreed to pardon Nicholas if he stayed under Girard's watchful gaze for another six months, until after the great exhibition was over. Nicholas and Rosalind would be married as soon as the demand was lifted. He'd reached out to Mr. Barclay to officiate the wedding. The kind man was eager to see Rosalind settle down. What else? She didn't look up. The hunching of her shoulders... She was expecting terrible news. Do you always think the worst? A lump formed in his throat. He'd been the cause of so much pain. He wanted to be the bearer of joy, not sorrow. Her gaze flicked to his. Nicholas reached over and pulled her to him. He placed her hand on his chest and cupped her chin. If you can bet on horses, I think you can bet on us. She smiled softly, her green eyes glinting in the balcony's lights. What is your news? After my service to the crown. Rosalind arched an eyebrow. Service? She wasn't wrong. He didn't have much choice in his employment for the next six months. Perhaps a bit involuntary, but still, service it is. Nicholas gave a one-shoulder shrug. I will be tasked with renovating the Conroe residence. Nicholas pulled her closer, delighting in her sudden blush. With the Conroys losing their title, the manor is now the property of the Crown and will be used as the Royal Orphanage. The Royal Orphanage, she murmured. Her hand traced the edge of his cravat. He squeezed her closer still. I've been asked to be on the board. She smirked, her lips delicate. Because of your extensive knowledge of being an orphan? With the back of his hand, he brushed her hair off her forehead. She no longer hid her beautiful auburn locks. Once we're married, we'll need to start looking. He cupped her chin and rubbed his thumb across her lips. Looking for... Nicholas leaned in and with the thickest Scottish accent he could fake said, For a wee beer and to adopt. Rosalind inhaled sharply, her eyes wide. Is that a yes, Ros? She grabbed his face with her hands and kissed him soundly. He laughed against her lips. 
and just what do you think you're doing? A man shouted. Nicholas kept his arm around Rosalind but stepped back. Who are? William Devereux stood just a foot away from them, his glare aimed at Nicholas. You're a cheeky fellow, aren't you? William. Rosalind rushed to him and threw her arms around him. He softened and laid his head on hers. Hands on her shoulder, William searched her up and down. You look like a proper lady, Ros. He shoved his hands off. Don't let the dress fool you. I am properly chuffed, love. William smiled, looking more like his sister with each passing moment. I've something for you. Rosalind folded her arms and stepped back. I'm not leaving, Nicholas. He let out a chuckle. One can only wish. I'm standing right here. Nicholas tried to frown, but seeing Rosalind with her brother lifted his own heart. He'd begun patching his rocky relationship with Ada. Both had wished for a better future for their mother, and yet fought the guilt that they were finally free. William called out, Come on out, lass. Rosalind, a woman's voice asked, Is that you? Rosalind's mouth fell open as a thin little thing came forward, her dress simple and threadbare. A mess of red curls topped her head. A thin layer of rouge was splashed on her cheeks and her lips were lined with salve. She was clearly a lady of the night. Her frame was slightly bigger than Rosalind's, but not by much. With hesitant steps, she came forward. Rosalind gasped. Miriam. In a rush, they embraced each other. They talked over each other, apologizing back and forth. Both women wiped the tears streaming down the other's faces. After a few tender moments, William separated them, whispering, We need to leave, Miriam. No. Rosalind grasped her hand. Please stay. Miriam sniffed. I can't, but know that I'm alive and well. I'll take care of her, Ros, I promise. William squeezed his sister's hand and tossed a warning to Nicholas. I swear to it, Rochelle, you break her heart, I'll slit your throat. Nicholas clicked his heels and saluted him. He winced at his own foolishness. William pointed at him. This is the man you choose. Aye. Rosalind cozied up to Nicholas, her arms around him. In a thick Scottish accent, she added, Any man who weighed in a sewer with me is a good man indeed. She squeezed him tightly. It's the size of his heart that counts. <laughs>